Hi YouTube, um, I've been taking lots of uh, videos recently, uh, mainly to show my kind of 80s toy collections and that kind of thing, um, but this video is going to be something a little bit different. Um, I'd like to uh, introduce you to my favourite pet, so if you come this way a sec. Okay, he lives down in this cage. Um, just bear with me a sec while I open it up. Okay, so this is a custom built cage um, for my three banded armadillo. Um, here he is. Okay, he's called Herbie. He helps. Um, and he's absolutely gorgeous. He's like the love of my life, apart from obviously my wife and my children. <laughs> but. Um, it took me a long, long time to find him. I searched for about three years before one came available. Um, and actually, when it did become available, uh, typically, I didn't have any money. So I uh, basically just put loads of collectible stuff on eBay <laughs> and sold it and managed to raise the money in a week to buy him. Um, and here he is. He, he's lovely. Um, I'll show you like more videos of him being really affectionate because he loves having his tummy rubbed and that kind of thing. Um, this is, I've just uh, put some fresh straw in. He will bunch all of this straw up and he'll put it in the corner over there and make a sort of nest um, by tomorrow morning. Um, so what I was going to do tonight, I was just going to show you um, his kind of feeding routine and what I do with him. Um, let me just put his... Uh, cork bark hide back in his cage he just has this to run around in um, and yeah he loves running through that so this is what I do to feed him in the evening um, he have two lots of food one in the morning um, and one in the evening because he's crepuscular um, which means he feeds basically dawn and dusk so in the food bowl here um, I've got uh, grated carrot that goes in. I have to do this every night. Um, grated uh, cucumber, and then this is um, dog food that's been chopped up. It's got to be high protein um, dog food, so I use this stuff here. Um, I'll chop it all up small, add that in. Okay, and then you can use really high quality um, cat food as well. So I use this stuff. Yeah, really high kind of protein content, 85% duck. Um, and this is grain free, this stuff. I just put a little handful of that in. Um, and then you can add uh, fruit. So I'll either use um, papaya, uh, passion fruit, guava, or um, tonight we've got some mango. And again, I just cut it all up nice and small for him and add that in like that and then also finally um, I add this stuff which is called Nutribol uh, this is like vitamin and mineral supplement but like a really good quality one so I add a little bit of that in don't need too much but um, it recommends that he has a sort of pinch so I put some in like that um, mix it all together like that. I've already put some water in his bowl and he'll root around in this quite a lot so then <laughs> just got to move him out of the way a second come here buddy just pop you there a sec and then his food bowl goes in the corner here um, you've got to have quite heavy kind of food dishes and things um, because armadillos really love to kind of root around a lot. Um, here's his other dish here which is a sort of heavy Le Creusier one. Um, I'll put that in there and so that's for his morning food. So in the morning what he gets is um, just a tub of standard mealworms. Um, or he can have giant mealworms actually so he has those sometimes as a treat but um, he will eat a tub like this every morning um, and what I do is I just put it in a glass um, 
put all the mealworms in the glass and then I just put some Nutribile in there, shake it all up so they're all dusted with the Nutribile as well. Um, and I mean he is absolutely gorgeous, he's, he's uh, captive bred in the UK um, and I really want to find him a girlfriend at some point, that's um, one of the highest things on my to-do list. Um, you can see here he's got a wheel, I made him a wheel um, and he will run in that every night. Um, that makes me think that he's kind of getting enough exercise, yeah, because I guess in the wild they would run around quite a lot. Um, I mean, he comes out and he goes on our sort of living room floor and he has a good wander about uh, flat as well. But um, but the wheel, I think, is an, an essential kind of extra for their kind of cage. Um, yeah, I thought long and hard about it when I wanted to buy an arm dinner. I didn't rush into it and I've been keeping... Um, and breeding reptiles and amphibians and invertebrates and other small mammals for um, I don't know 20 or maybe even 30 years now since I was a teenager anyway um, so other small mammals that I've kept have been quite smelly so I've kept um, African pygmy hedgehogs I found them to be pretty smelly uh, and I've kept uh, sugar gliders where the males kind of musk quite a lot so they take a lot of cleaning out, they're really quite smelly. Uh, these guys, I keep and kept um, lesser, ten, lesser hedgehog tenrix and they're not as smelly, they're pretty good actually. Um, and yeah, these uh, three banded armadillos, I found them to be not smelly at all. He's lovely. Um, so yeah, the scientific name for this guy is, uh, hey buddy, what's your scientific name? Tell us. He's going to tell us. Toloputus trisinctus. <laughs> See, I told you he was going to tell us. Um, so the armadillo you think of when you think of like the sort of typical armadillo is not this one. Um, the normal one is a nine-banded armadillo and that is um, Dasypus novensinctus. Um, they're a lot bigger uh, and also they dig all the time because they dig their own burrows, the bigger ones. Um, so I didn't want to keep that species. This species in the wild it actually uses the burrows that have been made by other animals um, so it doesn't dig quite as much as the uh, the bigger one which means it's not you know constantly trying to dig all the time. He helps. Hello, buddy. Um, the other cool thing is that their teeth are quite set back in their mouth. So, uh, as far as I know, <laughs> they don't bite. Well, he hasn't bitten me yet, anyway. <laughs> I don't think he would. And because he's been captive bred, I mean, I've heard of quite a few people that have kept these, and they've said um, because they can curl into a ball, they curl like completely into a ball. Um, if they're not friendly, they just curl into the ball and then you can't get them out again and they just stay there in the ball. Um, but Herbie, because he's captive bred, he's used to people um, since he was born and actually get, trying to get him to curl into a ball is quite difficult. He sleeps quite often, he'll sleep in a ball in his nest. Um, but once he's out, he's too curious, he just wants to see what's going on all the time. Um, so yeah, this this um, custom cage that I've built, it's got, um, I don't know if you can see under here, it's got like sort of solid oak um, bottom to it, which um, stops him from being able to kind of scratch through it. And it's um, it's got under floor heating under here, and then there's a thermostat that controls that. Uh, and then he's got um, special lighting to control different times of day. Um, and that's all on timer switches and things. Hey buddy. Hey buddy. But yeah, trying to find a female has uh, proven to be pretty difficult. Because uh, I'd love to breed them. When I built this whole cage, I built another one on top. I know it's got like um, 80s Tamiya cars in it at the moment. But <laughs> um, I was hoping that I'd be able to keep a female one uh, in the cage above. Uh, and then just introduce them um, during the breeding season, um, which helps to kind of uh, elicit a mating response. Hey, 
buddy. Hey, buddy. In a minute, when he comes around, what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you um, how he likes to have his tummy rub. rubbed. I was going to do it in a separate video, but um, I might as well do it in this one. Herbie, come here, buddy. They got very sensitive hearing, um, and I don't know if you can hear, but they make a noise sometimes that it's very, you sort of go, it's a bit like the noise that an otter makes, um, and I think it just like sort of vibrates. Here you go, look. If I do this, tickle him on the tummy. Hey, buddy. Is he going to do it? Do you want to roll over? He's a good boy. There you go. Um, but also, you couldn't do this with one that wasn't tame, um, because one of their kind of um, defence mechanisms is to curl tightly into a ball, and the edges of their um, shell are reasonably, you know, tough. Uh, and if they decide to close around your fingers, um, you would really know about it. <laughs> Get your fingers stuck. So yes, that you can see. So in the wild, um, you know, if a dog tried to kind of eat one or you know some other animal and um, tried to get their nose in there, if they just close up real tight onto their nose, it's a it's a good defence mechanism. Can you see when I stroke him on the head? Quite often, he'll close his eyes, a bit like a cat, and. Um, I didn't think that they would be this affectionate, you know. When when I got it, I was kind of expecting it to be kind of just a bit like a rabbit. But um, but actually, quite often he'll like to have his kind of face rubbed and his head rubbed, and he likes to be tickled um, between the sort of gap in here, like in his wrinkle. <laughs> he quite likes that. So yeah, he's. He's very affectionate, and this thing that he's doing with his claws here, although it probably looks like he's trying to savage my hand with his claws, um, it doesn't hurt or anything, it's just him being curious. He's just saying hello. Hey buddy. Hello. Hello. Okay, I uh, better stop for this video, but um, I'm sure I'll post up more videos of him in the future. And obviously if I ever get a female that will um, definitely go up and ultimately I'd love to breed them and obviously if I ever did that, that would definitely um, be videoed and put on YouTube. Um, look out for my other videos because um, I keep a lot of different reptiles and amphibians and things and I'm breeding stuff all the time so um, I'll post things as and when anything interesting happens. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you in the next video. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. Because um, if you subscribe, anything I do post up, you will get to see as soon as I put it up. Catch you later, YouTubers.